What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm taking a break from fixing the hoopties in the garage and today I'm going to be going through step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how to put together this Step 2 Whisper Rag Cruiser. Uh, this one's going to my daughter next week. It's her birthday. Super excited to give it to her. She's not quite old enough for power wheels just yet, but I think this will do quite nicely in the meantime. So uh, just taking a look out of the box, obviously we have instructions. Uh, instructions are pretty straightforward for the most part I think, but there's a few steps in here that are a little little murky and uh, some of the pictures are kind of pixelated so I figured uh, if there wasn't any confusion I'll just go through the step-by-step uh, -step installation of everything just to be on the safe side and uh, I am going to try to follow each step and number it as they are here so hopefully if your instructions look like mine they haven't changed them too much uh, we can kind of just follow along at the same time. In addition to the instructions uh, we got some paperwork here, registration, uh, decals. We're going to stick those on probably in the last step. And then uh, a few random pieces here. We've got the push bar that goes in the back. Taped to it there are the rods that are going to serve as the axles for the wheels to attach to. I'm going to set that off to the side for now. Uh, we have our steering wheel. Nice. This little, uh, I'm going to call this a dashboard like cowl piece. I think it's going to sit right up here. Finish up the back of the steering wheel. And then uh, our four wheels and a bag with various hardware, seatbelt, and a couple other things. Oh, and of course, the car itself. Can't forget that part. There are some tools that they claim are needed to uh, put everything together. I haven't taken an in-depth look through the instructions just yet. I'm gonna kind of follow along myself on the first go, um, but they do say you need a hammer. I think you could probably get by with a uh, rubber mallet or maybe like a sand sledge, but uh, this is all I have right now, so I'm going to be careful when I use that, just make sure I don't do any damage. They say a Phillips head screwdriver, not sure what size I needed, so I got two be on the safe side, my medium and my large one. And then a crescent wrench and some slip joint pliers. So I got those all ready to go. Oh, and of course, uh, if you want to be super safe, they uh, you can throw on a pair of safety glasses. And as always, if you guys find this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and show me some love by subscribing to the channel. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and tear into my bag of hardware here. A lot of different pieces in here. I'm gonna kind of follow along the instructions and see that I have everything accounted for. Okay, so first step is going to be assembling one of our axle shafts, or these axle rods. Um, basically, we have this installation tool J that's going to sit on a flat surface, and then we have this cap here. Uh, this cap is basically going to hold the wheel on to the axle on the end of it like that. Um, so what they have us do is put this axle cap O down the installation tool, and then we're just going to feed the rod right on the top there. We're going to tap on the top of it with our hammer. Uh, you don't want to go crazy with it. You really just, honestly, some pretty pretty moderate love taps should be enough to get it to seat inside of there. So let's go ahead and give it a little tap here and see what happens. And there you have it. I can kind of feel it sink down into this cap once you feel there's not much resistance and it sounds like, you know, your hammering noise is getting a little louder in whatever surface you're hammering on. Chances are it's probably on all the way and you're good to go. Step two, they're having us feed. Well, first of all, we got to get our wheel on. Choose any of the four wheels. Cap, like I showed you, is going to be on the outside here, like so. And then on the back side, we're taking two of these end washers. My guess is they have two on each wheel to kind of provide a little extra surface for it to uh, rotate on there. So we've got two washers on the end and that is it for step two. Okay, with half of the axle shaft assembled, this axle rod, um, we are going to install it on the car. It doesn't matter if we can start with the front or the back. And it looks like you could possibly uh, lay the bar on and snap it down into place. What I'm gonna do, just so I don't risk any damage to the bar, I'm actually gonna feed it through right underneath these little tabs here. Push down here just so we can clear it on this side. And there we go. We're all the way through. We've got pretty good rotation of the wheel. 
Okay, covering steps four, five, and six now, we have the car laying down on our installation tool that's gonna to go right on that black plastic cap that we put on earlier. So we are gonna rest it on that tool. And then this axle is gonna get two more of the end washers, like so. Slap the wheel on there another cap to hold it all in place. Now, they have you just tap this straight with a hammer. I'm gonna do that myself. If you wanted to, you could put a piece of wood or something on there just to kind of provide a little protection to this plastic cap. But I think, uh, I think I'll trust myself enough. I'm not gonna break it. We'll see what happens. There we have it. There's that back, back axle and the two back wheels completely installed. I'll run through the front axle real quick just for uh, review if you guys need it. Insulation tool, cap, axle rod. Next, this axle gets a wheel. Two washers. And then we'll feed it onto the car. Okay, we've got our axle on the installation tool, again on that little black cap. And then this top side is gonna get two more washers. Should be the last two washers. last wheel and then one more cap on top here for steps seven through nine we're going to install the steering wheel uh, first of all we have this piece here this is H goes right into this opening. We have an arrow to indicate that it should be up. And basically what we're gonna do here is, uh, you see these little fingers here on the end of the steering shaft? Those compress in. So when they hit the inside of this plate, they should compress in, come out on the other side and lock it in place. You wanna see these fingers sticking out, these little locking tabs past this inside of this collar. So we're gonna hold this in place feed our steering wheel. Looks like we'll have to compress these to get it in. Like so. So that is all the way th through. Like so. We're going to hold this in place and push until it clicks. Let's see where we're at. So you see that one wasn't quite all the way out, but yeah, that's pretty much where we want it. Um, if for some reason these tabs haven't stuck out all the way, but you're through as far as they'll go, you can come in here and spread them out either with your finger, screwdriver, you know, whatever you want. But basically these two tabs have to be fanned out all the way, just like that. And we're just about ready to go, man. This is starting to look like a car already. All right, steps 10, 11, and 12 involve installing what I guess the installation instructions call a windshield. I guess I could see it, but I wouldn't want to be driving with a tent like that. Um, this is as simple as line up these two tabs with holes in the body. It should be right here. So we're gonna push those into place. A little difficult to line up. Those are putting up a fight. So I've got one started there, but yeah, it looks like these holes are not perfectly opened on the one that I have. I'm trying to see if I can 
get a second one started here. Okay, so my pegs here are a little wider than the opening holes. I think I figured out what I have to do here. I'm gonna start this side, just cause it's a little more difficult. Try to hold that one in place. I'll bring in down this one. I'm gonna push it in, kind of push it in on itself a little bit. So those two pegs are started. Now we have to bring the cowl down and we want this opening behind the steering wheel here to have not much of a gap. So we might have to push that in to compress it, slide it in behind the steering wheel. And it looks like the sides are fighting me too. So these sides, you have to push them in to clear this part of the body. This is not the smoothest step, but it can be done. A little finesse. And then the only thing left to do are to secure the windshield. There are two three quarter inch screws. There will be the shorter fatter head screws here and they go in holes right on the inside. Maybe you can see that one there of the uh, windshield. Okay guys, so probably the biggest hurdle I've noticed kind of uh, after the fact while I've been putting this together um, to attach these two screws for this uh, windshield piece here, there are no holes on the body. Uh, they basically tell you in the instructions, start a small hole before starting the screwdriver. Um, but there are no holes to attach to, basically meaning I would have to get a drill and put a hole in myself. Uh, what I've done, uh, and I did start the screw on the other side there, I don't know if you can see that. This plastic's soft enough that if I get my screwdriver in here and you push hard enough, it will start um, through the windshield piece and it will start eating into the plastic here. So I basically just apply some pretty firm pressure on the screwdriver. I'll do that here in a minute, but before you do that, since we're kind of, you know, making a hole and attaching this in place, you want to make sure, and the instructions call this out too, make sure there's no weird gaps around the base of this windshield area, and also make sure it's sitting nice at the top of the steering wheel. There's no big gap there where you can see any pink or anything like that, or blue or red, or whatever your, your vehicle color is. So um, I'm feeling pretty good about the way this is lined up. So let's go ahead if I can line this up. I have the screw feeding through the hole, applying a moderate amount of pressure. Yeah, there, it's starting to go through the plastic already, so just keep screwing. If you really wanted to, you could get a drill and put a little pilot hole in there, but that plastic's soft enough. That's nice and snug. So that's good to go for steps 10 through 12. Okay, steps 13, 14, and 15, we're installing the seat belt. Um, this can really be installed either way. Uh, these two tabs will feed in with screws into those two mounting spots there. Um, I'm gonna do mine this way, because I feel like, at least me being right-handed, when you buckle up, you wanna grab that strap to tighten it. So that's how I'm gonna do mine. You can do it whatever way you want. But basically we're going to use our two longer screws these are looks like an inch long and there are recessed areas on these tabs these are that's flat and that's recessed there we want the recessed side so that the screw is fitting right inside of it all right so this one's going to go on our right side here apologies for my washing machine in the background start the other side before we tighten these down all the way. The instructions actually do show you to fan these out, which makes sense because we've got a recessed area here for that uh, plastic tab to fit into. So I'm going to hold this off to the side and I do it, tighten it these last few turns. that's nice and snug you can get a little tight with these because there's metal that it's threading into again I'm going to hold this 
tab out of the way on this side while I tighten down the screw. And something I've noticed is I followed the instructions and my location and everything looks good, but something I noticed is that my buckle here, or the receipt, or what, what is this? Yeah, the, the buckle here, um, it's got this curved piece here and it's really supposed to be going the other way. So I'm wondering if this got put on the wrong way from the factory. Because when I buckle it together, I mean, yeah, we can make that work, but that's not the most comfortable. So I'm going to see if I can't unthread this seatbelt. And I think personally it's going to be a lot more comfortable for baby girl the other way. So we'll see what we can do there. Okay, I have the strap. I'm curious if you guys have the same issue, but I have the strap all the way to the end of its travel. So I'm going to see. It looks like we can feed it back through the buckle. spin this right yeah spin this around I'm curious to see if you guys have to do the same thing I feel like this has to be done in error okay so I'll thread it through the underside Back up out the back side here one more time. There we go. That's looking a lot more legit to me. Yeah, I'm liking that. Cool. All right, so the seatbelt is all set. Now time to move on to the handle. Install the handle. We have this piece here, Q. And this threads through from the seat back. like it's supposed to. Again, having trouble with the holes not being quite as big as they should be. There we go. So that's all the way through. And then one washer and then a locking nut. And you can honestly, they tell you to use a crescent wrench. You can use a socket. Whatever fits on there is going to work for you. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and tighten that one down. Now, when tightening this nut, we don't want to go super crazy with it because we're going into the soft plastic. But basically just keep tightening it till it's nice and snug we're starting to feel a little bit of resistance Honestly, I'm not really feeling much resistance but I think I'm gonna stop there before I do any damage that feels pretty good and then I'm gonna get a flathead to kind of straighten that piece out but there you go that nut is secure okay so if yours is like mine it should come with this uh, this big bolt, this is R, and then the nut that comes on it is S. And this is basically going to be a pivot point for our uh, big push handle. But the instructions tell you to tighten it until there's about three threads sticking past the nut. So it should look something like that when we're done. But uh, we're going to go ahead and grab my handle here. And once that long bolt is out, we're going to go ahead and put our handle in place. And you want to make sure you have it like this, where the red knob is facing towards you. You don't want to have it inverted or anything like that, or else it's not going to lock in place and give you the stability you need. So I'm going to go ahead, feed this bolt through. There it is started. Just kind of wiggle this handle around until we get our hole lined up. Didn't think it would be that hard to line up the hole, but you can't see what you're doing in there. There we go. Okay, so we have threads sticking out on the other side. Go ahead and put our locking nut on. And 
And basically you're gonna get a wrench on either side, one here and one here. And we're gonna go ahead and tighten this since there's about three threads sticking past the top of the nut. Yeah, it says about three threads sticking through. So maybe one more, one more turn for good measure. So we're good to go there. The next step is gonna be to swing the handle up. We're gonna kind of wiggle this knob till it lines up with that post that's in there. We'll force it on, you just kind of wanna turn the knob till it naturally wants to thread on. You can even come back here and see what's going on. There you go. Yeah, big thing is you don't wanna cross thread that. So we'll go ahead and push the handle up snug. Turn our knob till it's nice and snug, nothing crazy, you don't wanna tighten it too hard. And there it is. That's pretty snug right there. Just kind of stopped moving. So I'm going to let it go with that. And that's the handle foil locked in place. Next step is to throw on the bottle holder. And it looks like at my best bet is going to be to start one side first and then work the other side on. One side in. There's the other side started. Okay, so I finally did get the drink holder in. It was kind of a fight to get it in. Uh, again, another situation where the holes not quite the right size but basically I had to just kind of turn it around a little bit get it at a good angle and just kind of squeeze it in there um, it's not really gonna sit perfectly square either side but as long as it doesn't go anywhere it serves its purpose all right guys so there you have it um, the only step remaining is to put on our decals uh, which we have our decal sheet here the description for those, the location is laid out in the instructions. I'm not gonna do that on camera because that is too much pressure and I need to make sure that mine are laser focused to satisfy my OCD. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that off camera and then uh, we'll give this thing a test drive. But uh, basically the only other thing the instructions cover is just showing you that if you loosen this knob all the way to the left and free it of that post, you can swing the handle down and under the car for storage. Um, you can prop it up against something and take up a little less space. So there you have it. Like I said, the only thing left to do is throw decals on a test drive. Um, but overall, I hope you found this video helpful. And uh, it was great having you. Well, we'll see you on the next one.